A candy company wants packages to contain a mean of 8.17 ounces, so that virtually none of the packages contain less than eight. Let me explain that, because if you, I think I was explaining it to you, if you tell a machine, like when you, when this is a machine, this represents the results of a machine. You, in other words, you set the, the dial on the machine to produce eight ounce packages of candy. You think every package of candy is exactly 8.0000, some are slightly higher, some are slightly lower. So if you say eight, and assuming it follows a bell-shaped curve, most of them are around eight, some are a little bit higher. You're gonna get very few of them that are nine, very few that are seven, but you know, it depends upon the standard deviation. But if you sh set the machine at eight, what percentage of the, of the packages will be below eight? If you take you know, you're the manager of the company and the advertising says eight ounces of candy and you set the machine at eight, and it's producing eight, 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 but sometimes higher, sometimes lower. What percentage is lower than eight? Since I assume everybody knows the answer to that question, I'm gonna answer it myself, yes. 50%, half of them are gonna be below eight and half above eight. So if you set it at eight, you're gonna, you're gonna screw half your customers. Because eight, but, so therefore you set it a little bit higher. You set it a little bit higher, so that you know, some are 8.16, some 8.15, some at maybe 7.99, might happen one out of a thousand. But I'll, so you get, you're giving the customers a little more, cost you a little more raw material, but that's basically relatively inexpensive. Um, I'm, I don't want to break my, well, you don't have your name out anyway, right? Okay, so guys, fair warning. So please take out your names if you want to get credit for your answers now. Okay, that's, so that's why it says about 8.17. A sam so the number eight in this particular example really is irrelevant. Uh, a sample of 50 packages selected, and we want to know if the average is different than 8.17. Okay, so the hypothesis, so let's do, so, we, so, so then a question, we want to, we suppose, um, is there evidence the population is different than 8.17? Use an alpha of 10%. So it's clearly hypothesis testing. It's clearly one sample, and it's clearly non-directional because it says, is it different than 8. It doesn't say high, it doesn't say low, it says different. So let's put, now let's solve the problem in the four-step procedure. The four steps are to put down the hypotheses. Step number two is you plug numbers into the formula, which we'll do quickly. Step number three is you make a T diagram, which starts out like that, with the rejection region if it's really, really positive or really, really negative. And at this point, I'm not going to go back to the, just like if you learn one plus one is two and you figure out why it works, because you don't have to every time you do it go back and explain why one and one is two. So at this point, I'm not going to necessarily explain the whole logic of every step of this method. We've explained it in detail already. And we're going to take the alpha, chop it in half, because we want to distribute that possibility of a type one error if this happens to be too high by bad luck or too low by bad luck. And in this case, they tell you use alpha 10%, so we can take the jumping ahead to it's going to be 10 divided by 2 at some point. So this piece here is going to be 5% of the total area. And I might as well jump ahead to step number 3 already and remind the class that the degree of freedom is n minus 1 or 50 minus 1. Let's go back to step number 1. And, step, and then, of course, the answer you get out of this calculation will be compared to this boundary to decide to make the, make the final decision. That's how we've been doing it the last few lectures. So the challenge is really what number goes over here? And the same number always goes on top and bottom. What number goes here? So let's just start plugging it in. So they're telling us the ideal, we want to know is it different than 8.17. So I think everybody realizes that the number that goes here is 8.17, not the 8.00 as you might think by reading that. That 8.00 is really a red herring. The X bar, the sample can turn out to be 8.151. So it's a little bit lower than 8.17. The only question is, is it significantly lower than 8.17? The mu is always the same number from the mu over here. And that's the ideal number. The standard deviation of the sample of 50 packages turned out to be 0 0.055. And the sample size was 50. So if anybody would like to please plug this into a calculator and tell me the result of it. Everybody, I shouldn't, everybody should do it who wants to pass the class, but I just need one. So, so, and if anybody's not clear where I'm plugging those numbers in from, you should ask me. Um, and while we're at it, uh, Dean, I'll talk to you after class also, okay? Anybody have an answer yet? I can do it in my head. This comes out to, I'm sorry, this should be a 50, I'm sorry, this should be a 50 here. 
So if 7 goes into 0 0.055, about 0 0.07, 0.07. This is 0 0.02, 0.21. I don't know, it comes out to minus 3, something like that. Yes? Okay, minus 2.44. So let's, let's, and if anybody's getting a different answer, you can certainly, you can certainly um, ask me to try to figure out your mistake if you can't find it on your own. Step number three, which we started doing, requires you to take the alpha, the given alpha, chop it in half, and to look it up with 49 degrees of freedom. So now please turn to the T table, go down to row number 49 of the 0 0.05 column. And as soon as you know, I know the number could be 1.66, 1.67, I believe, 1.68, yes. 1.6766, and of course you have to put down manually the negative version of that, 1.6766. And if anybody can't find that number, you can certainly ask me to come to your seat to show it to you. But we've been doing that really since chapter eight, but maybe you know, everybody works at their own rate. If you need help, I'll be glad to help you. Step number four, which is the most important step, the easiest step, and the step that most people mess up on, is to recognize that, well, now we're ready for the fourth step, is the conclusion. So where is minus 2.44? Minus 2.44 is even more negative than minus 1.6. So it's clearly to the left of that line. What do we label that region? Reject a zero. So it's like asking, what color is George Washington's white horse? White, right? So what, 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 if you end up in the reject region, what's your conclusion? Hello? Yes. Reject, okay, so the answer is to reject A0. It, be, it sound like, you know, sounds too easy to be true, but that's, people mess it up, believe it or not. Reject A0, but that, of course, will not solve the problem. What was the original question? The original question is, is there evidence to conclude the population is different from 8.17? You have to say yes or no. You can't say reject A0. That's the mathematical answer. What's the English answer that's going to answer the question that's going to demonstrate that you understand what we just did? What's the answer to the question? I'll repeat the question again. What's the, is there evidence the population is different from 8.17? A simple yes will? A simple yes will be sufficient, but you've got to put down that yes if you want to earn the five points or whatever that's going to be worth on, on the test. Okay, reject A0. Yes, there is evidence. What is the evidence? That average of 8.15 is the evidence. 